Fetty Mint is a protocol, just like Bitcoin is a protocol and HTTP, which is used for web browsing, is yeah. a protocol. Um, and obviously the Lightning Network has a protocol as well. Yeah. Um, whereas Bitcoin is a protocol for hard money, um, limited su fixed supply, um, one of the most decentralized things we've ever created, if not the most yeah. decentralized, um, able to store value and transact, but um, it is slow. Um, mm -hmm. It's not perfectly private, um, but it's still pretty good in terms of privacy and pretty fast, you know, yeah. a, a dozen transactions a second. And th th those are purposeful trade-offs for the first two things yeah. you said, right? You because need the imperfect privacy for fixed supply and et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. The, the realization was that the most important thing to get right is to have something that's decentralized. Yeah. Um, and censorship resistant. Mm -hmm. And then from that, you can you can build on. Um, and so that's what Bitcoin gives you. Um, Lightning then is a layer on top, which allows you to, to send these Bitcoin around at lightning fast speed. Mm -hmm. So very fast for lower cost. Um, it also um, improves privacy as well, um, as, as well. Um, but it has limitations it's in terms of how many um, different people can be using the Lightning Network at any given one time, or not people, particular, um, we call them Lightning nodes, yeah. can be using the Lightning Network at any given time. But for that, for that, within that constraint, and that strength is millions, potentially tens of millions mm -hmm. right now, and in future that could be greater, um, they have the potential to send value around between themselves at, at incredible speeds mm -hmm. at very low cost. What Fediment is, is a protocol to be able to take Bitcoin and scale the custody of it. While um, Lightning scales the transaction rate for it, Bitcoin, um, um, Fediment scales the custody. And it also, um, as a side effect, that scales privacy and also it scales transactions as well. Mm. But but think about it as, to begin with, this community custody um, um, scaling mechanism. It was invented by the, my co-founder of, of Fedi, um, and he um, invented it um, before I met him. And actually, the first organization to discover his idea um, was Blockstream, and they were the first to sponsor him to work on this. Um, and the idea uses a protocol called eCash. Um, and eCash is the first digital money. Mm -hmm. um, Pre-Bitcoin. It, it was pre-Bitcoin yeah. by 25 years. Yeah. Pre-Bitcoin. Wow. 1983, um, David Chow, who is this famous, um, say famous um, cryptographer, um, came up with this idea to be able, it's a very simple cryptographic Primitive, but it allows you to sign something without knowing what the thing is that you sign. Mm -hmm. So imagine you get an envelope with a piece of paper in it, and then you have one of this sort of the photocopy um, paper that you put inside that when you write on it, it imprints on the paper mm -hmm. underneath. Mm -hmm. And you could, you can create it the the software equivalent of that, where you can have an envelope with, let's say a picture of your pet. Mm -hmm. You put this carbon copy paper, I mean, carbon copy paper inside. And then on the outside of the envelope, you sign. Mm -hmm. And then you, you um, open the envelope, take out the photo. You'll still have your photo, but now your signature will be on the photo. But mm -hmm. if, I'd, if you'd given me that envelope with the picture of your, your dog in it, and with the carbon carbon um, paper on top inside the envelope and then give me the envelope and I signed it and gave it back to you. I know I signed whatever is in that envelope, but I don't know what was in the envelope. Mm. Was it a picture of your dog, a picture mm -hmm. of your cat, mm. a, random, a random string of numbers? I don't know what it is. And so that cryptographic prim primitive um, it was called blinded signing, blinded mm -hmm. signatures. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he invented this idea, but he realized, well, what, what would be something that would be worth me signing? And then he realized, well, imagine if we, these were actual notes, like 
each one represented like a banknote. Um, and um, you would go to, let's say, to a fairground, and you go to the entrance to, of the fairground, and you give them money, and they give you um, tokens to use around the fairground to, mm. to, to, to use on any ride you want to use. Well, once you've got those notes, which are, are basically um, IOUs that represent them, the cash that you gave at the entrance to the fairground, mm -hmm. you can use them any way you want within the fairground. And once you've received them, they're, they're completely private. You can use them any way. You could mm -hmm. give, I could have 20 or 30 of these and hand them out amongst my kids. Yeah. Um, my kids could lend them or give them to their friends if their friends have run out of, of these tokens. Or they can use them in any rides if they if if they use them on a machine and they win the jackpot and get um for and get they could get mm -hmm. returned back additional tokens, and all of those transactions would happen within the fairground and and be private. Yeah, because they're bearer asset like basically. Because it's a bearer asset yeah. within the confines of the fairground, yeah. um and um. Also, there's no transaction limit because they're all peer to peer. Mm -hmm. You, there might be a limit to how many transactions you could do with with your cash at the entrance. But once you're in this fairground, there is no speed limit to how mm -hmm. many transactions you can perform because they're happening directly from person yeah. to person. Yeah, um, it's it's basically there's no limit. How the fast you, if you it's, uh, you're only limited to how fast you can transact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can you can transact fast and you get privacy. There's only one downside at the point that you um, got these tokens mm -hmm. and the point you redeemed, the person, who's, the person who's, who's running the kiosk and holding the money is aware of who they gave a given mm, okay. token to and who they're redeeming it for. Right. It's still pretty private, but you've lost, you've lost a little bit. Right, right, right. How do you solve that? Well, instead, if the user comes along with an envelope, one envelope per, per note that they want. Mm. Um, and they'll say like, I want $20. And they come along with 20 different envelopes, each containing just a random, a random unique number to represent a unique note. Yeah, And then they give the, the kiosk $20 plus these 20 envelopes. Mm. And the kiosk will take a $1 stamp and we'll stamp each one of those um, those um, envelopes, and then return the envelopes to them and keep the twenty dollars. Hmm. Now the person takes the uh, envelopes, opens them out, and takes the notes, mm -hmm. and they now have these notes. the The kiosk operator at some point might receive back a certain number of notes, and they will check: Is my stamp my official mm -hmm. stamp on this note? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I must have signed it. Mm. But they won't know who it came from. Who it came from. Gotcha. So the last piece uh, is solved by this one idea of the blinded signatures. And now you wow. have perfect privacy from beginning to the end. Wow. Okay. Very simple system. Yeah. And it actually operates once you have these eCash in the way when most people first hear about the idea of a digital money, mm -hmm. how they intuitively think it should work. It yeah. should be like when I have the money on my phone, right. it's actually on my phone. It's like yeah. different digital notes on my phone. And when I send the money from one person to the other, I'm actually sending notes, like I would send yeah. notes from my wallet and give it to someone else to, for them to hold in their wallet. The yeah. same exact thing happens with eCash. Wow. Um, we, we all, when we first heard about Bitcoin, um, it, we intuitively understand it to work that way. Mm -hmm. And then we realize, no, it doesn't work that way. And there's a double spend problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's issues. Or, and then you have the blockchain and so on. And we have to learn a whole new way of mm -hmm. thinking about how money works because yes. the idea behind Bitcoin is so mind blowing. Yes. But eCash is very simple and completely private and scales to without limit as long as it's within the confines of a given community. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click here to find more just like it and here to find our most recent episode. Also, make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money. And be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected.